Okay, welcome to the uh, third week of the second level or second term. Um, you got a lot of stuff to practice on, so you shouldn't get too burnt out on any one thing. There's lots of stuff. This is a real struggle part of the level is to get up to that point where you really have access, you really start learning some songs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over your scales again. This is another yet another quick test, but I'm only gonna give you the uh, first couple of scales you've been working at. We're gonna go up to 130 beats a minute, okay? And just the discrete scales, we're gonna go one pass at uh, quarter notes and probably a couple of passes. I'm not gonna move up and down the neck. You know what to do in practice. So you just wanna practice, start getting the, the, the level up in your, in your tempos so you can get a little faster access when it comes time to play solos or to play a single line over someone else playing chords along with you. You'll wanna be able to express yourself and having this, this a little extra speed. It's kinda like working out with weights. You know, you work out, you know, with the, and try to be able to bench press 250 pounds and be able to do, you know, five uh, reps of, of 110 pound military presses without working up a sweat. So you can go down somewhere and show off and do a one handed push up. You know, you don't use all that power for the one handed push up, but you gotta be in shape to make it look easy. So again, in order to be able to play and have the ease of play and have the ease of being able to speak through your instrument, you don't wanna be stumbling over any of your technique. So this is really about building the technique and getting better. Uh, I can't encourage you uh, more stringently than to say, please practice and get in plenty of reps. Be sure to use your rep counter. If you start slowing down and think, oh, God, I'm not making any gain. I can't keep up with him. Well, you're not getting enough reps during the week and you're not pushing yourself to uh, raise your own metronome setting. So play around with that. And again, if you get to where you feel you've got most of the second level, you may be ready for that, 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 uh, that third term, that second level book, the green book. So uh, you wanna consider that. This is when you start thinking about, well, well, should I move forward into that next level? Some of you who've already played a little bit, this, these first two levels are gonna be a lot of review for you and a lot of skills building and chops building. And a lot of our, my professional uh, students, they go back to these basics and they practice them. They, they use their counter and they keep track of their reps and they find it really gives them more articulation when they're playing something at a gig. So there's a good reason to go over this stuff as if it's daily aerobics, daily exercise, just what you do. So we're gonna do it real quickly here. Here's your E shape at 130 beats a minute. We're gonna start it in the key of B flat. You gotta find it, I'm gonna make you find it. You should be able to find B flat on the lowest string with your second finger. One, oh, here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, play with me. Double it up. Up a half step to the key of B instead of B flat. And we'll stop right there. So you get the idea. So we're gonna go to A shape. Uh, we're gonna start that in the key of uh, D flat. You find it on your own. Here we go, 130 beats a minute. Two, two, three, play. Quarter notes. Make those notes nice. They're notes you intend to play. Double it up. Again. Up a half step. Stop there, you get the idea. Now we're gonna to go to D shape in the key of G, which will you'll find it, I'm sure you will. It's on the key on, on the D string, and you're gonna start with your second finger. So find the key of G or find the G note on the D string. And 130 beats a minute. Two, three, four, two, two, three, play. Double it up. Up a half step to G sharp or A flat. Up another half step to A. And you get the point. Okay, we're gonna go to C shape. We're gonna be an E flat. Starts with the pinky on the A string. Here we go. 
two, three, four, two, two, play with me. Double it up. Shouldn't be uncomfortable. If you've been practicing enough, shouldn't be uncomfortable. A pass step to E. And so on. Okay, now we're gonna go to B flat again with the pinky on the lowest string for G form. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. Try not to move your left hand. Here we go, double it up. Stretch. Up again. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, play with me. Remember, don't move your left hand. Try to keep it in position. Stretch, no movement. Double it up. step to B. Very good and stop there. Okay, now you get the idea. That's the speed you should be at. It shouldn't be uncomfortable and like the old professor, you can play these a million times and still still mess them up a little bit, but that's okay. Just keep practicing until you get real consistent. It's like a golfer. You don't play scratch golf every day, but you hope you always play scratch golfer better when you're in the tournament. So that's what all the practice is about. So now we'd like to do the five chord forms, but we're gonna add the scale shapes in between every chord that we play and stay in time. So it's gonna be a little different exercise. It's basically the, uh, the spelling bee exercise. And I know I'm kind of pushing this forward and kind of introducing to, to you maybe a week early, but I want you to see how it goes. If you're comfortable starting it now, do it now. If not, you can wait till next week. But sometime between now and next week, over the next week or two, start adding your scales to your chord shapes on your five chord form strumming exercise. So this will be called the spelling bee. So we'll give it a shot at 130 beats a minute. One, two, ready, play. Next chord, play the scale, double time. Back to the chord. Okay, say the chord, spell the chord. Say the chord again. Next chord. Say the chord, spell the chord. Spelling it is playing the scale. Say the chord, go back to the same chord. Next chord. So it's chord, scale, chord. Spelling me. Next chord, going back down, same thing. I'm in C form here, and that's a C form scale. Those are things you have to be thinking while you're doing this. Remember what you're supposed to be remembering. Go to the A shape in its open position. Next chord, play the scale. Chord. Got most of it. <laughs> here we go. Just like practice and hurdles. Here's your shape, here's your single fingers playing the notes 
within that shape. Very important to learn this. And last chord, of course we don't play any scale there. Here's D shape. Nothing in open position. Out of open position, play the scale. Kind of verifying what shape you started with. Two, three, four. I guess I can't talk and do this all at the same time. We'll start that again. Here's D shape. One, two, three, play. No scale at first, scale on the, on, the, on the next shape when it's out of open position. Next chord is A shape. Play the scale. Back to the chord, next chord up the neck. Two, didn't get all the notes. We'll try it, we'll try it again. Everybody's gonna have that problem. Even the old crazy professor has a little trouble with some of these. You always will. That's the whole point of practicing every day, is to try to get better and better as you go. Back to G form. A beast of a chord shape. But you need it. And down to the next chord shape. All five of them. Two, three, next shape. Two, three, four. Three, four. G. Scale shape. It's going to be tough for the classical guitar guys. And back. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, play. Chord scale chord. D shape, and it's the top one back to the next. One lower is E shape. So that's all five of your chord shapes and the, all five of the very uh, the, all five variations at 130 beats a minute with the added scale uh, shape thrown in on each chord shape out of open position. Uh, we won't do the open position scales for a while, but we'll we'll study those at a later time. So those are the things you want to work in as your exercises every day. You're, we're going to take a look at the chord primers once again, but we're going to go over the first page. We're gonna bring that up and we're gonna play just eighth notes on this. I'm gonna talk about a couple different rhythms to use with your, uh, with your chord primers and of course with your blueses. So the first chord primer starts in, the, uh, in G. I'm gonna take it up to about 130 beats a minute. So we're gonna just play two uh, passes of each section 
take the repeats, but both times we're playing, we're gonna play uh, eighth notes. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different things to do with muting and that sort of thing. So one of them will be, so when you mute, and you got open strings, you gotta kind of lean over like this. And also you wanna, there's another video on this that you've probably already seen, having to do with strumming. You wanna land on the heel of your hand. Right on this part, the fleshy part of your thumb. And I may be leading some of the chords with a couple of bass notes. So just watch closely, and this will be part of, part of a lesson where you have to use your ears and kind of watch, watch my left hand real close. So here's 130 beats a minute. One, two, three, play. Next exercise. Again. Measure, A minor, D minor. A minor, D7. specific kind of a accent in certain places. And I'm moving a couple of extra notes around with my pinky. All right, I may have added an extra chord or two in there too, but that's the fun of it. Once you get these chord cadences going, start actually writing songs over them. Um, so work on your second and third primers this week. Get your spelling bee exercise engaged. Now we're gonna take the blues, we're gonna take it down a little bit slower. We're gonna take it where it's a little easier to play. We're gonna take it down about 100 beats a minute. I'm gonna show you a little bit different strum with that, okay? So here's 100 beats a minute, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. Again, some of this is somewhat entertaining. One, two, three, play. These are just quarter notes. I'm snapping that two and four. And this could be straight time or it could be swung time. You don't know yet, because I'm just playing four to the bar. It's kind of a secret how we play rhythm. Now I could interpret this as a shuffle when I double up. I'm still muting with the back of my, uh, with the heel of my right hand, and I'm relaxing my left hand. You have a, a nice mute, it sounds like a bunch of uh, drumsticks clattering together in a box. It has a nice percussive effect. A bunch of bamboo slats being slammed on the ground by a bunch of beautiful native women. Sometimes you get that sound working. Now I'm gonna play it straight time, like I'm playing a rock tune. So those three different ways I was playing, I'll, I'll, I'll verbalize them. One is ba da ba da 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 ba 
ba do da ba it's a shuffle kind of sound. That last one's ba ba da ba do da da ba do da da ba do da da. You get a kind of a back beat working on the top edge of the strings. So I kind of do the depending on what part I strike the lower uh, strings, uh, what, what part of the measure I strike that with, and, and the rhythm I decide to use, the, the syncopation in the, in the eighth notes I decide to use, it creates a feel. So you want to start experimenting with that. Because again, once you get to where you can make the straight changes like this, and not have any, any problems getting to back and forth to the chords, then you want to start adding some feel to it. The feel that you want to have uh, involved, the stuff you want, to, you want to play, the rhythms that you feel good about. So here's where you got to start listening to your, to your favorite people, okay? Start uh, adding some of that into your repertoire of what you're listening to. Uh, pick out some of your favorite tunes, and we're going to stop right there. Here's the other thing I want to be sure we get to. Don't forget to go back to your reading section and study your single lines in open position. Uh, fifth week, we will go through that page with you. Uh, with a metronome so you can see what it sounds like. It's not a song. It's a way of learning how to read the notes, quarter notes at a time, in open position with your hand in this position. And there's two other uh, what we call uh, etudes or little songs that uh, have chords and melody to them. And I can play those melodies for you so you get to hear what they sound like. Those are That's kind of your goal over this uh, this 10 weeks. And then in the next 10 weeks that you spend time, you want to get to where... Uh, the uh, the stuff in the book that's single lines, it's meant for you to study the open position reading, that you spend some time with that. So later on when you want to play a lead sheet, uh, it's, uh, playing a lead line from a lead sheet is not foreign to you. You want that to be a part of what you do is learning to read music on the staff, not just uh, playing rhythm and chunk and chords, which is nothing wrong with either of those things. But uh, you want to get the whole, the whole meal deal here. So we'll see you next week. Keep practicing. Thanks.